What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Film Lover's Guide to the Galaxy. Galaxy Brains, last week was a duel, but we got Jared back here. What's up? I'm back, back, brother. From, it's, back. I feel bad. I feel it's been like forever since I've talked to you guys. Um, outside like the group chat. That's what I'm talking about, man. You gotta we can't we can't miss you for more than a week. <laughs> but uh yeah, I was gone. It was my brother's wedding. Congratulations to him again. Yes, congrats. And, and I, I have a sister now. It's kind of weird. <laughs> um, but right. yeah, uh, we're, it was really awesome. It was really beautiful. Really, really happy for them. And yeah, so I am excited to talk about everything we've been getting into recently. Yeah, we got a big plate in our hands, you guys. So, you know, with the Loki season finale, with the release of Black Widow, I think it's time that we kind of put our foot into the MCU stronghold and we'll actually talk about our top five of the OG solo movies. So if you're not part of that OG Avengers team, then we're not going to talk about your movies so far. Uh, But before we get to all that, Joe, uh, what have you been watching consuming this past week? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it again this week. Uh, HBO max fucking sucks. Really? You don't Uh, like it. Like what? How? What does it suck? Is it the oh, actual baby, platform? I'm so ready. Okay, <laughs> give, give this is, it this to is, me. This is this rant is, part two. <laughs> no, not part two. It says Jared since he didn't hear. So the fact that there's no next episode but option, right? Awful. Yes, completely uh, agree. Volume control is really shitty, and this again, awful. This is awful. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, if you're watching HBO Max on your computer, you know, if, if you have multiple tabs, if you mm-hmm. tab away from HBO Max, it pauses. No. You cannot play it in what? the background. Yes. Like the weirdest okay. thing. Fucking um, try that right now. Yeah. So it's just open Chrome, run something on HBO Max, open another Chrome, another tab on that Chrome, and it'll pause after a few seconds. No it's way. it's it's repeatable every time. It's ridiculous. Um, the play on Clueless. Yeah. Whatever works. See. You're gonna be. You're gonna be. It's, it's I'm still, still here in Alicia Silverstone. And you have it not on a separate window, bro. New tab. New tab, bro. And the it tab might just is, be you. Dude, it's it's multiple people, man. No, really, that that's kind of weird. I'm gonna Maybe send you a video of it working next okay. time. Yeah. Anyways, do it. Uh, the point I make also, like you know, the only reason I'm doing it because of exclusive content. But some of the exclusive content sort of sucks. I told Johnny last yeah. week I was gonna try watch Studio Ghibli stuff. Like they have like a bunch of stuff. Whole thing's dubbed, not subbed. So I don't want to really watch it in English. That's super super annoying. Wait, what's what's dubbed in that? The Studio Ghibli, like the all those animated uh, movies. Oh, they have oh they have the subs, but it's really cumbersome to get to. What? I, yeah. The thing is, the options, dude. Do, you have, do we have different HBO Max? You and me? I don't I, think there's we, a different HBO Max. We might. No, I dude, don't know. When I go so to it and I go to like uh, audio, because the audio options is just English. Oh yeah, so it's not that. It's an actual separate movie, I believe. Oh, oh no, yeah. So so okay, so I'm in the browser right now. Okay. So if you like my neighbor Totoro, right? Sure. If you cl- if you click English, it'll switch to Japanese and you can click it Wait, again. Wait, what? Hold on. So my Okay, hold on. Yeah, so it's on the mobile app like I can switch it from Japanese yeah. to English. Wait. Yeah. Oh my Jesus. Yeah, bud. But I mean, that goes no. to Joe's point. The UI, Joe's, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The UI is absolute dog shit on HBO Max. I have like, and especially like when you start playing it, it like it takes. There's so much artifacting and the quality. It takes a good little bit to fucking. Anyways, I'm, look I'm, good. I'm gonna, I I'm gonna find, figure good. this shit out. When I, 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 and you'll you'll be able to see it. Anyway, the pause thing is a, is a small thing, but anyways. The point I'm making is why not just copy so that you don't get copyright strike from another streaming service and just keep it the same. It's fine. I you know, I don't think Netflix has a copyright on how their volume rocker looks or how their next option is. I, I don't think that's an issue. Um, other than that, uh, that's my only thing. I have been watching Rick and Morty still. It's gotten worse, unfortunately, over time. <laughs> Like start, <laughs> really? What the fuck? Uh, are you like, what's gotten worse? So the the current fifth season is started off really, really good. First of all, do you guys watch okay. Rick and Morty? I've, I've I have not watched the second season. Pat, yeah, like second or third season. Okay, so if you guys aren't into it, so you guys wouldn't care if I told you. No, so like tell me. It started off great. You know, it had you know good kicks, good humor, all that. The latest episode is about uh, Morty's sperm. The whole thing. 
him just <laughs> jacking off. And it was just like not very entertaining. It was, that was the only thing. So I'm hoping it picks up again. And the last thing I watched is an older movie called The Game. Uh, I think with Michael, Michael Douglas. Douglas and Sean Penn. Yeah. So, um, again, it's only because it was on available on Netflix or Hulu or something like that. It was just mm-hmm. available there. Might be HBO. I don't know. That was a David Fincher joint, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it was an older movie that you could tell it's older because of the way, like the, the 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 lighting, the scenes, like everything was dark. There's not a single like bright scene in that whole movie. Like almost if as if sounds, sounds like David Fincher. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it feels like any like if any movie kind of like a was it a movie. 90s movies or an 80s movie? I don't know. It was 97. Okay. I want to say most 90 movies, if you say, oh, this is going to be a horror movie, the whole thing is put on like a dark, like you put a dark tint on the whole thing. And like now it's a horror movie, right? Yeah. And same, same thing, like if it's if it's like a if it's like a like a teeny bopper movie, you'll put everything bright. So I think it's, it's super But anyways, the point I'm making is the game was very, very good. If you guys haven't watched it uh, for a movie that th- that's this old and it hasn't been spoiled for me when I first watched it. Um, great twist. Great concept. I think Michael Douglas does a great job um, and it doesn't really get boring. And I think for a lot of old, older movies for me, the pacing is an issue. But for this one, it was pretty good. And I think it was a pretty long movie. It was like two and a half hours or something. Um, but it was great. Great. And I'm surprised that I haven't heard of it. Um, so I'm, you know, learning something new every day. I completely agree that HBO Max is a, is a, is dog shit. <sighs> it, it, to me, it goes, God, what? So Netflix is the best, obviously. Okay. I think so. Netflix. Like Hulu's pretty that, good. No, Hulu's way down there. I hate Hulu. Okay. So what's between Netflix and Hulu? You ate Apple Plus? <laughs> Apple yeah, TV? Uh, no, Apple TV is also bad. It's like okay. Netflix, and then there's this huge gap. Oh, okay. I thought you were just and numbering then, them, like one, two, three, four. Probably Disney yeah, Plus. Like, yeah, Disney Plus. People yeah, Disney really should under people don't like Disney Plus, but I don't. I don't see the you problem with it. Disney Plus is what's H- Disney Plus and HBO Max are the opposite. Disney Plus has like not that much content, I'd say, but it has great like UI and everything. It's like it's good for people who want to watch eighty-seven episodes of The Simpsons. Or like that same Pixar movie forty times, <laughs> but the actual <laughs> things that are on Disney Plus, Some like families, I guess. But I'm saying, like, you play for your kid or something. But like, I want to say, like, fifty to sixty percent of stuff I've never really watched or interested in begin with. So if if you could take HBO content and put it on Disney Plus, I will pay the double price for it. I watched Monsters Un- University recently. I like that again, movie again. God, that movie is so funny. Dude. I always forget how funny it is. Also, I'm a little concerned that Pixar uh, is getting diluted a lot because, yeah. like, Luca or whatever, the la- is that the latest one that came out? Yeah, we did a show on it. Right. I didn't like it. <laughs> I, I, I fucking forgot. Holy shit. Oh, my God. That's it's not, that was a couple no, weeks ago, man. No, it's, it's Rhea so too. Bad. It sucks that the the absolute awful person that John Lasseter was seems to be have been like their big creative driving force. I don't know, man. Everything sort of, and I saw there's another movie that's coming out by Disney. See, I don't know if it's Disney or Pixar. That's the problem. I th- right. we we talked about that during during the Luca episode. But the thing is, they all all the animations the seem to be blending together a little bit, mm-hmm. and not in a good way. Right, I'm okay with having unique animations or whatever. It like they're trying to make it like super uniform, which is very Disney of them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I, it's going to be one of those things where they they kill the golden goose eventually. They're going to cook the goose, and I'd say within a couple of years, Pixar is going to be not that great, unfortunately, if they keep yeah. on doing what they're doing now. So I ha- I watched um, <laughs> I watched Magic Mike again again. I, nice. I, I, Bro, if you I, careful, I might make that by my, my selection because Magic Mike is fucking great. Um, it's, a, it's a solid movie. I yeah, absolutely. More ways than one. Oh yeah, I watched the um, Wellington Paranormal, which is the kind of like a spinoff of what we do in the shadows. It it involves the two cops that they were that was in what we do in the shadows. It's pretty funny. Boy, I'm trying to like go back and like look at what. I've been watching on my watch history. Um, this is for just any streaming service. 
Yeah, it's kind of. Oh, I, Invincible. I watched. Oh, nice. All of Invincible. I binged it in a day, guys. Yeah. See, that's a lot of Invincible in one day, man. It. W- so, okay, here's the thing. I watched the first episode. It's going along fine. I'm just like, oh, this is pretty good. J.K. Simmons. I'll watch anything J.K. Simmons. Yeah, right, right, right. And then that ending comes. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, and I had read the comics and I a long time ago and I forgot. And I was like, nice. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Like, I stayed up till 3 a.m. watching that show. I think it was on 4th of July. Amazon Prime for me. Yeah, Amazon Prime. Um, I also hate Amazon Prime streaming video. I think it's bad. Uh, what else? I, yeah, I watched this show on um, History Channel called Alone, which is really good. But I've also been playing a, some video games. I've been playing Dark Souls uh, because I like hard games and it's real, you know. Dumb. You like to punish yourself? You I like know, to punish myself. <laughs> I like challenging games too, but Dark Souls doesn't really do it for me. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. Sorry. I knew I was waiting for something to, to talk about. That I that I made a note. I rewatched Terminator Two: Judgment Day. Nice, yes. nice, fellas. This movie one still holds up. It's yes, it really does. good. Two, the gun sounds do not hold up in that movie. <laughs> it's it's because they used whatever they used for guns. It's like they so slammed on something. Yeah, it's so weird. It sounds like it should be in Aliens now. Here's a question for both of you. Do you guys like T2 or Aliens better? They're both James Cameron. Like the Alien series? A- no, Alien 2. The, the one Sigourney, with... Sigourney Weaver. Not Sigourney Weaver. Um, yeah, yeah, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Weaver. Sigourney but Weaver. I'm talking about the second one. So the first one was a horror movie. We can all agree on that. Yeah. Yes. And the second one, James Cameron pretty much created the idea of Space Marines. It's the one with the little girl. Um, nope. Newt and um, Paul Reiser is that slimy Waylon Utani guy. Man, I don't know. I was I keep going back and forth, but I think I like Aliens better. This is just Aliens, not Alien, right? The second one. Correct. Correct. Okay. There's no movie called Aliens Two, right? No. no, no okay. No. Aliens uh, plural is right. The right. One. Right. That's the sequel. Um, I don't know, man. I I sort of grew up on Terminator and Schwarzenegger. And mm-hmm. I did watch the aliens like way later on. Man, um, shit, that, there are so many ones that I want to like choose to. Like the whole aliens franchise is really cool. I like it. I am a big fan of space horror, but I mm-hmm. think having a I don't know. Maybe it's because I just like Schwarzenegger more than Scorny Weaver. Because <laughs> maybe that's why. But that's about oh, yeah. it. I, uh, they're both great action films. Um, but I think uh, I like I like Terminator better i mean for that, sure that's a good question i think i would take t2 over aliens simply because i got linda hamilton in t2 and it's like when you watch She's her great. from the first movie then compared to what her character arcs in the second movie it's like night and day and that's what got really excited now you mind i also watched t2 first so i really yeah. didn't get the twist but then i can only imagine when people watched in the theater for the first time they're like oh shit He's a good guy now. <laughs> she's yeah. great. You yeah. know, like she she absolutely that whole scene segment when she's in the mental facility. Yeah. That's just gold. It's honestly one of the best scene like parts in any movie like with her ju- just like getting that guy and ho- holding the syringe yeah. in his neck. The whole thing is just tense as shit. And then she comes around the corner and then sees the Terminator and is just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, and she just so, feels so helpless. And it, yeah. it, was so, it was so good. It's funny, though, when you don't tell James Cameron about the gun sounds. I need him to finish Avatar 2. I don't need him to go revisit oh. any more of these movies. Like, I need to wrap it up with this one here. What's what's James Cameron been up to lately, though? Just keep Avatar, on. baby. Avatar. That's it. That's that's it in the last couple of years. He's yeah. living in Pandora for real. Oh. <laughs> and maybe that's why it hasn't been released yet. Because I mean, what do you guys so think of Avatar? Avatar? Like the first one. It's fine. It's it a fine. Fern Gully slash planet or uh, Fern Gully slash dances with wolves slash kind of thing. You know. Now, 
I'm still trying to figure out why it made billions of dollars. It's a great theater experience, man. Like the 3D. The 3D, the 3D was. Oh, unreal. this is the first ones will be like, and they gave you glasses it, and stuff, right? Well, no, no it's it wasn't the first, the first, but it, it, it was the first one to actually not make 3D a gimmick. Like it was very immersive to watch it. So that's why when you watch it at home, now you notice like yeah. I things first, don't make sense. It and it first began with like that drop of water in space, and you're just going. Oh shit! And I was really stoned when I watched I it. Because <laughs> yeah. when you think of 3D, you think of shit shooting just, at you, whoa, right? It's always like, taking that effect. But he just uses it to immerse the world, and that's why yeah. it was worth the theater. But experience. was the story good? No, it depends. Am it I watching a- it in theaters or I'm watching it at home? Because if I'm watching it in theaters, it kind of disappears. You, you kind of forget the story it. Story have to do with? I'm taking strictly the story. Oh yeah, then it's whatever. It's, the script sucks. It's yeah, it was very basic. like I said. It, <laughs> it was a very fir- it was Fern Gully slash Dances with Wolves. So that's the thing. Does, does Avatar two? I don't know. I haven't flat? seen it yet. Yeah, here's, a, here's a prediction though. I mean, is it going to fall flat because of how much money Avatar made and how many? No, people I think people will still go see it. I think okay. it'll be yeah. people like listen, like God damn it, people wear your fucking masks so we can enjoy the movies <laughs> again. <laughs> and Dune shit. doesn't get fucking pushed back again. <laughs> Um, but anyway, oh, I saw Fast Nine today. We took our my students to the movie theater and saw Fast Nine. How many yeah. students did you take to watch Fast Nine? Forty. Holy smokes! Yeah, our whole program program went. Shouts to uh, dude, why can't Triangle we, Square? The why cinema can't we do that shit. We had some boring ass shit in high school, man. We didn't do cool shouts stuff to like that. Triangle cin- cin- Cinema that uh, let us rent out a whole theater. You know, I hear that's actually a lot more affordable than I anticipated. Yeah. It ended up being like two bucks, three bucks a kid. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. It's amazing. And um, um, they open about an hour early for us because I work with students with special needs. Um, it was awesome. Uh, the movie was absolutely like, uh, I don't know, guys. I'm a, I'm all behind the Fast and Furious name, but well, I gave one, it, I gave it a B minus. That's funny. He. Joe gave it a better grade than I did. That's like a solid generous. C. That's a that's a, a, that's a solid C minus for C me. Minus. Thank but, you, Joe, Johnny. I, I, you know why? It's because they go to it, fucking space. That's so bad. That's, that's, he, why. He, that's, why. <laughs> that's it alone. Bumped him. Bumped Joe's a letter grade up because they dare to actually do it. Um, they took. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm trying to say is they took what the internet it was a basically internet meme, right? They're like these motherfuckers. All they think is do is, and they actually did it. <laughs> like there's i think that's it, that's funny like, i jumped no, around so much like i just could like mi oh yeah fami- me familia like yeah, it's, it's not oh, it's not look on. it's not realistic in any way there's no realistic combat there's no realistic fighting there's no realistic driving sequences there's when, no realistic storyline when he when the bridge was out and he purposely drove towards <laughs> one of the supports yeah. to somehow wrap the th- rope or whatever around his fender and so he could swing. Yeah. I, uh, myself and all the other adults in the theater, all my coworkers, we're just, we just laughed. Just it, absolutely laughed. Here's the thing though, right? You got to like, if you go to McDonald's to get <laughs> a McDouble, okay. Do you, oh do you know exactly what it tastes like? Yes. it. I like it. Right, but we're not yeah. expecting a high quality burger. I, yeah, it, well, you you are right in that sense, but at yeah. the same time, if I'm ordering a McDouble, I do have Ex- certain expectations of what that McDouble's McDouble is gonna taste. Yeah, but, and and I, with an inedible amount of mustard or ketchup. <laughs> yeah, so you know the the biggest feeling I had with Fast Nine is that like there was never a feeling of stakes. Like I never thought that there was a life oh, no. being lost. Look, like, man. and that's and that and that's where the problem is. At least, yeah. at least with like Fast Six, Seven, it felt like <laughs> Dom might maybe get a scratch on his forehead. But in this when movie, he, he just pulls down, down <laughs> when he pulls down the ceiling of their hideout. <laughs> yeah. like, oh God, is Dom gonna die? And then I was like. Oh, I'm an idiot. No, yeah, he's not. no, he's not. not. But, but he, but, but he, has, but he has no fear, and that's where the problem is. At least the other movies, there's a sense of like, guys, he he would accept that. I think this I, movie, he just decided I don't think Superman. This, 
I don't think this movie deserves like an in-depth analysis. You guys don't understand. It, it kind of does because no, yeah, it's about I mean, this. My deep. favorite. I mean, my favorite one is Tokyo Drift. Oh, yes, Tokyo <laughs> Drift oh is no. sweet. that's the worst one. Actually, no. Too uh, fast, too furious. Probably the worst yeah, one. Yeah, let's thank not get you. let's not get crazy here. Uh, Dude, Tokyo, Tokyo Drift is the best because my boy Han. Uh, I mean, well, your boy Han came back. <laughs> Yeah, and they fucking squandered him. He just he's eating chips on the sideline. That's bullshit. That's what I mean. Like he's oh god, I don't know. I don't know why they have to use like some sort of like midwestern hick for Tokyo Drift. Um, I because it's a fish out of water tail. Dude, you can bring any white guy. It'll be fish out of water tail. Anyway, my uh, but but the close second, like probably one A one B, is the one at the end. I think I think it's Fast Five. Where they're dragging the t- the bank vault at the end. That was. I was telling Joe that, that is still sweet. that is still the best action sequence in the whole Absolutely. series. Absolutely, like, so fucking cool. It, it is. The point is, I'm never paying for a Fast and Furious movie. No, I definitely didn't pay today. I will not pay <laughs> ever pay to watch any of those movies. I think, and now now I gave it a B minus, but keep in mind, I think the whole franchise is garbage. So yeah, it's that's it. it's fun. It's, it's supposed to be. garbage. That's what it is. Again, you, you don't put, you don't put. There's no analysis involved. <laughs> it's, it is. There's no like read between the lines with this at all. It's right. it, it, exactly what it is. But anyways. yeah, it's about family. Duh. Okay, uh, <laughs> it's about me, familia. <laughs> me, familia. Um, so I'll, I'll keep it a little quick. So the only outside of the stuff that I watched, uh for this is also was on HBO Max. It was no sudden move. Um, mm. It's a new Steven Soderbergh movie with Benicio oh, Del Toro and Don Cheadle. That. Let me tell you something. Steven Soderbergh is probably the most overlooked director in this generation because really movies okay. that he does bangers. are bangers. It's just that yeah. you don't really associate. Every time I say Steven Soderbergh, he's all like, oh, Ocean's Eleven. I'm like, okay, yes, he didn't make Ocean's Eleven. Cool. But that guy... Has done movies like Traffic, Aaron Brockovich. I mean, the new uh, one, I forgot what Unst- Unstable or Mank. No, he didn't. Mank. No, he didn't do Mank. No. <laughs> that that can I be. Just like throw, I just like I just like to throw Mank in whenever. <laughs> um, like like uh, Jared was mentioning, Magic Mike, um, Out of Sight. Like these are movies that like are just really good. He's a very economical director. Like there's really never any fat to his movie it goes bang 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 and if you guys get through that ui no sudden move is actually a really good 1950s like uh caper that i i didn't know i wanted don Cheadle and benicio del toro and david harbour in the same movie it's it was solid so you guys should check that out i i really liked his hbo movie about liberace behind the can- candelabra oh yeah I, that's good that too. was absolutely fantastic yeah like he he does a lot of different experimental stuff. Shoot, he did that one with uh, Adam Driver and yeah. Daniel Craig as well. About uh, what is it? Uh, is that the one they, like, they're robbing, like the Talladega Run, or something? Uh, yeah, tell, yeah. Whatever the hell it is. Yeah, it's it seemed like a good movie because Daniel Craig plays like some sort of crackhead. Logan Lucky. That's what Logan it is. Lucky. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. So. All right, guys. So we're going to talk just a little bit news. You know, as we're talking about MCU, I just want to talk about the Emmy nominations came out uh, this past week. Uh, Our favorite show that we collectively agree on, Ted Lasso, got a lot of nominations this time. Um, Deservedly so. But I just want to ask you guys a question. So let's stick with Ted Lasso in general. If you had to give a best supporting nomination to any of those actors, who would it be in Ted Lasso in Ted Lasso specifically? Coach Beard. Yeah. Coach Beard, right? Or it'd be the, in the Indian Nathan. coach. Nathan. Yeah. Nathan. Okay. Yeah. Or I guess technically the owner, right? The blonde owner. Well, she, no, she got nominated, but that's best actress. Okay. Oh actress, yeah. My right? bad. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So what if I told you, that there were seven supporting actor nominations. And Ted Lasso got four out of the seven for best supporting actor alone. You got the coach. You got Nathan. You got the assistant. What's his name again? Coach Uh, Coach Beard. Is it Coach? No, 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 no. The assistant to the owner. Oh, like the British guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Yeah. yeah. With the glasses, yeah. And Uh, Higgins. 
Higgins, that's right. And then the washed up soccer star. All four of them got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. The oh. other two were from SNL. And then one more is from, I forgot what show it was. I bet you that there just wasn't a very big pull to pull from. That's, yeah. That seems pretty excessive. I wonder I wonder how much quarantine played into it, you know. Like seven seven nine. Yeah, but like seven seven is insane. Seven is insane. Like I can get five. Or, I, you're or, pushing it with six. But to I have seven in the same five. We're in the same category. I don't think all f- I love all four of them, but even I don't think all four should be nominated, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um but that kind of ties into the MCU. So Disney Plus got actually a lot of nominations, partly because of The Mandalorian, which, you know, excellent show. So absolutely kind of deserve it, right? Uh, but since they can put these shows in the limited series format, WandaVision got a lot of nominations, including Best Limited Series, Best Work for Actor, Actress, and Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, and Catherine Hahn as Best Supporting uh, Actress. But I want to talk about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. It got five nominations. Four of them were from a technical achievement. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get that. Joe, if you had to guess what that last nomination was for Falcon and Winter Soldier, what do you think it would be? Falcon and Winter Soldier. And this is a technical? I already gave you the technical. They had one actual, I would say, call of major. Uh, costume. Costume. I don't know. They were talking about what they got nominated for, like category wise. Yes, correct. It, so it eliminated all the technical stuff. So he, it got nominated. Don Cheadle actually got nominated for his role in The Falcon Winter Soldier as a guest spot. Ooh. Do you want to know how much time he actually had on that actual show? No idea. Not it was less answer. than three minutes. Hey, guest spot. Maybe that's what, the, what it was defined by, you know? I don't know. He was as shocked as I was that I, he got nominated. Jared, what did you think of that actual nomination? Uh, I completely <laughs> forgot he was in the show. <laughs> right? <laughs> Mind you, I didn't like that show at all. I thought that was a pretty middling thing for them to put on as like a marquee show. Like it, to me, they took a like two hour movie or whatever, and really just kind of drug it out over however many episodes it was. And I was just like, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's hit all those spots. And we'll talk about Loki in it in a little bit. And that's why I think I appreciated Loki so much. Yeah. Which Falcon, it didn't do that. If Falcon winter soldier, I, the thematic, the themes of that show resonate a lot to me, but as a TV or limited series, I, you can tell this is their first foray. And when I say them, I mean Feige and the MCU. Because as much as everyone will throw out shows like Daredevil, uh, Jessica Jones, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., keep in mind, that was ran by somebody else. Um, so that stuff doesn't count uh, on their end, right? So this is their first time kind of working with it. And you can tell that even though WandaVision came out first, I understood why... Falcon and Winter Soldier was supposed to be their first limited series to come out first, simply because it was kind of like the epilogue to what Captain America's story was going to be about uh, to follow that through. So it would have made sense for it to be released first. But, you know, we got WandaVision out first, uh, which is kind of a good start. So before we get into all that, like I said, today is kind of like the MCU day um, because of a lot of stuff that's dropped out. I am the only one out of the three that has seen Black Widow, uh, which, you know, came out at a time where a little bit too little too late. She should have had her own movie a while back, just depending on where it is. Now, you guys haven't seen it. And when you guys do, I'll be interested to hear what your opinion is. I think it was a very solid spy movie, which they picked in the right direction. I do think that um, so director Kate Shortland, but with writers uh, Jack Schaefer, who also did uh, she did a Falcon and Winter Soldier. I can tell that's where some of the thematic themes were coming from. They have a better understanding of family than Fast Nine did this summer uh, with all the characters that are coming out. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I so, but it's funny because I think in ten, fifteen years from now, 
people, when they put on Black Widow, they're going to love it. But the problem is, is that within this timeline, I don't know if people will appreciate the movie for what it is. And what I mean by that is that they'll complain like, you know, they're not so much judging the movie, but so much judging of like, why are we getting a Black Widow story now when she's dead? Right. Of course, it's going to take back time. Um, and the timeline makes sense because it takes place right after Civil War. That's not a spoiler alert. That just lets you know kind of where the timeline is before we get to Infinity War. Uh, but yeah, so we'll move on from that. And we'll actually talk about Loki itself. Uh, I want to use what you said earlier as kind of a segue into my point about Loki. You can mm-hmm. about how you can tell f- this is uh, Feig's for Feige's first uh, foray into um, into episodic content. Before Jared um, starts, I just want to warn everyone: if you are listening and you oh, have yeah, not spoilers. watched either Loki or WandaVision or any of the MCU sto- um, uh, yeah. shows. There's a lot of spoilers, so okay, go ahead. That's your warning, Spoil- everyone. <laughs> spoilers for for everything, literally. Yes. I think that at by I don't know the production schedule. I don't know what came first. I don't know what came, you know, everything. But to me, Loki is Feige and crew finally starting to get it. I love that Feige isn't afraid to now use these Disney Plus series to introduce new characters that have huge ramifications on the movies. WandaVision, we kind of got that a little more. We got that a little bit. Falcon and Winter Soldier, did we really get that? I can't remember. Did we get any huge impact? I feel like with Falcon and Winter Soldier, the impact is is that Falcon becomes Captain America. Yeah. You know, you see the journey that he takes to become it, but it doesn't really change the overall landscape of what the mcu is totally and then so we've had falcon winter soldier we've had wandavision or so it was wandavision first and falcon winter soldier and now loki correct yeah Am I forgetting anything in there okay nope, that's it so the whole story of loki has been so good it's been so confident and fun and really i i want to say a mature story i hate saying that but it's so it is so it is done with so much confidence that's the word that i i loved it so much especially this final episode when jonathan majors came out in his like kind of wizard of oz type reveal the best i loved him in lovecraft country i love him i loved him and anything i've seen him in i'm very excited for this new big bad that we're going to see from him. Like I said, I love how they're not afraid now to use these as direct. Like it's so smart to use this as a way to nudge the, the movies and supplement the movies and even introduce a huge new character into the movies. Uh, I love that this was resolved. The ending, there were no huge explosions. There were no like pew, pew, boo, laser beams kind of thing. Okay, they were people in a room talking. It was dialogue. It was, you know, they they didn't fall back on these huge Marvel cliches. It was it was character moments. It was development. It was conversation. And it was just really good. Jonathan Majors was chewing the scenery like a motherfucker. I loved it. He was so good in his whole performance like it it, it, honestly i loved it joe i know before i follow up with jared i know you've only watched the first episode of loki what what has prevented you outside maybe your work schedule from not watching the other that's literally it um i i i agree with the general sentiment and this is coming from a guy who hasn't watched it i don't mind getting it spoiled but um i think that it it is very good um i think that it's I think it got good reviews everywhere, so I do. I do want to watch it. I've just been extraordinarily busy, as all. So I, I caught the first episode; it was good. Um, but I'd, I'd like to let the listeners know that I am not a huge uh, Marvel fan, like a fanboy sort of thing. Um, I do respect that if you are, it's, it is what it is. It's fine. I, for example, WandaVision, in my opinion, was very good, but it wasn't like like the best thing ever, and I probably won't rewatch it. 
Watched it once all the way through. <laughs> Good stuff. That's really about it. And so um, it might sound a little prejudiced saying this, but going into Loki, I'd probably sort of feel the same way. I'll watch it. Very good. And I'll never watch it again. So that's how I feel about it. The first episode again, very good. That's all I got from it. Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think, like I said before, I think it just caps off, you know, Captain America's story. WandaVision, I, I thoroughly enjoy the character arcs of specifically, you know, Wanda herself. But it felt like it was a holding pattern until we get to Doctor Strange. This movie, or this show, though, specifically you, Loki. So wait, yeah. you thought you thought WandaVision was a, was a holding pattern more so than Falcon and Winter Soldier? Yeah, because Falcon, Falcon and Winter Soldier, to me, did what it needed to do and got in and got out. Um, now, whether you think it's good or not, that's a whole completely different issue. Yeah. I just, I just think that it told, it is about Bucky accepting that he can be good. And it's also about Sam accepting that, you know, there's going to be trials and tribulations with him being a black captain America. That's all I got from it. There's nothing mm-hmm. world changing or building about it. And I thought when those two stories were told, it just was there. When it came to WandaVision, they were trying to build something bigger and I've, it makes sense why WandaVision was supposed to be the third one released out of these three. Cause if we were to see Loki first and then WandaVision, then I, we kind of get it right. Mm-hmm. It, it, it makes sense. But at that point it's just, to me, just outside of Wanda herself and her character arc, it was to me like a holding pattern. Loki though, Yes, Loki is a bridge, like you said, to what the MCU is going to do. But it told its story like an actual show. It it had a beginning to end. Yes, there are some cliffhangers, but that is because that gets us into the second season. There's cliffhangers for the movie, and there's cliffhangers for their show. And I, I just thought, you know, Hiddleston is such a... This is what happens when you give him an actual like screen time, right? Like he's always the guy behind Thor. He's never the one that's kind of like forefront of everything. And you realize putting him in the center, this is kind of the Loki that we're going to get. Uh, Sophia De Martino, the one that played Sylvie, excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, excellent. She was so good, and I just love the actual kind of like final scenes leading up to it uh, just because I love the idea of like, Oh, Loki really is a changed person. Like you always in the back of your mind in a lot of the movies, you're like, Oh, he's changing for this movie. Not so much for uh, his character arc. Cause he'll change himself again, blah, blah, blah. But this one, you, his character arc like is earned. And I thought that was an absolutely fantastic way to do it. Also, Owen Wilson, look, I get it because we've watched all the scenes. Owen Wilson, when he got pruned, that was the first time in all those three shows where I looked at my wife and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, like it, it actually got me um, when it made me realize, damn, Owen Wilson barely had screen time, but he did a, he did enough to where I'm like, oh, shit, I care about you, Owen. This is, this is really good. Um, I expect more of shows like this in Loki uh, fashion. Uh, and I think, you know, you could tell this is their third show, but it's like hitting their stride. They're, they're getting it right now. Um, I just also have to accept the fact that these shows are here, like you said, to prop up the movies to expand it. So some things I'm just going to have to accept. I'm like, you're just world building. I'll deal with the world building later. I just want to know concretely what, we're talking about thematically within the show. All the other stuff, we'll kind of worry as we go along. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ride a little bit for Wandavision right now. I think it was much better than the credit this podcast is giving it for giving it to. Uh, I think it was a great story about grief. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was used to set up the Doctor Strange movie, but I really think that it. I think we're forgetting the 
whole beginning of that series of like what the fuck is going on with this like there was a sense of like real excitement and novelty and to it you know and i really really appreciated that about it i really loved the character arc of these people of her specifically in the movie or in in the movie in the series of having this grief and letting it go at the end and really bettering herself through it. And I think, yeah, I, 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 I want to say it's, you know, I don't think it's, I think it's on par with Loki in my mind with how excited I was to watch it. I was on, on like, I will say the ending with like the whole huge, like just like energy blast mm-hmm. and like fights that's like, but that's just kind of a trope in like a pitfall of the superhero genre. You know, I think that's why I appreciated Loki more. Cause at the end it was, like I said, people in a room talking and really acting the shit out of that material. But I think, I think WandaVision deserves a little more credit for that, that not just us, but like a lot of people are giving it. I'll say WandaVision does one thing really well. Well, outside of, like I said, I, I accept the excitement because I know from people, they didn't get the first two episodes, but, you know, I did in terms of like, oh shit, like we're trying to keep guessing why they're doing the sitcom format. But to me, the B story was not even a B story. It was just to build the universe up. And I think that's where my problem is with WandaVision because the A story itself Fantastic. Like you're talking about, we're talking about Wanda, we're talking about Vision, we're talking about her acceptance of loss and building her character up. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I I think that when we talk about the B story with Loki, which, you know, it was Sylvia and then she became became the A story, but it was like more about Owen Wilson and kind of, you know, him learning, accepting that like, hey, maybe I was, I'm a variant, right? I, I got captured um is there such thing as free will Th- those things resonated with me more and that's why i think loki felt more like a real show while bridging the gap to the movies rather as wanda we're here to build wanda up because she's yeah. going to be very important to the movies going forward but everything yeah. else is to expand if that makes sense. it definitely had different ramifications like it was more a wanda specific show of course Wanda, you know wandavision there was a wanda specific show whereas loki's ramifications are literally affecting the whole universe of the marvel universe you know right this is pretty cool because i mean with black widow coming out with loki wrapping up that is two names that are part of the og avengers i mean one of them was the bad guy but i mean they're all part of it uh when we talk about the og ones we're talking about tony stark Steve Rogers, Thor, uh, Hulk, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. Hawkeye is kind of about to get his own show, which hopefully that that'll do well. But I, I thought it'd be pretty cool rather than just ranking all the MCU movies because we'll have time for that as we wrap up Phase Four. So there's plenty of time to do that. I thought it'd be pretty cool to give us our top five specifically of the OG Avengers movies. Before we go through that. What do you think is the worst movie from their solo outing? Thor 2. Dark World? Yeah, I think it's bad. I think it's real bad. The first Thor isn't anything to write home about either, but Dark World is fucking terrible. What about you, Joe? And now we're including Hulk now. Correct. Um, things I liked Hulk. I want to, you know, <clears throat> this is going to be, and this is just what I thought that personally I didn't like, mm-hmm. is uh, I wasn't. I know a lot of people liked it, but I wasn't a big fan of um, Civil War. And, not Civil War. Um, it's the one where... Is that the one where um, Iron Man fights specifically Captain America? Captain America, America. yes. That's Civil um, War. And I think that overall, as a movie, it's it's great. I think a lot of people like it for very, very valid reasons. The reason I didn't like it is because uh, Iron Man was in the right and he lost. Because that's how writing goes, I guess. No. Wait, 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 wait. I <laughs> cannot no. fucking abide by this. No. 
it just was it the now just just to make sure because it's been a long time since I've watched it because a lot of these movies I haven't watched in a while. <laughs> just to be clear, yes, this is this is the one where uh, Captain America is defending his buddy, and Iron Man's like, no, he did something wrong, and they're fighting right, and because I know there's you're all kinda, the other, you're kind of missing, missing, you're missing, much, you're missing the, the, okay, the clue okay. for it. <laughs> that makes me that makes me ha- better feel better that's, about that's you. Saying I mean, Captain my memory is not so good sometimes. Okay. Right. Is, am so I- here's the thing. I do agree that Captain America was being a little little shithead defending protecting Bucky, his friend. Like, yes. Protecting Bucky. Right. He is a absolutely a true life guy whole, right there. But the whole like superhero registration thing. Oh yeah, no, no. That's I remember that part now where they're meeting about that and they're saying it did disagree with it. And they're so, gonna be it's a like Kobe yeah. Accords. It's yeah. It's just it's it's just that scene that kind of stuck with me, and I don't know why. It just just needs to seem that in in I guess in in a vacuum, it was just like like I don't I don't like the idea of oh he's my friend and I need to defend him no matter what sort of thing, and I understand the whole loyalty concept, um and uh, I don't know. It just it just the whole continue in terms of the whole continuum of 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 MCU. I wasn't. I wasn't just the biggest fan, but I know that a lot of people like it. Joe, so I will, I will admit that. Yeah, Joe, I would protect you if you were brainwashed and you didn't know. Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That whole it was so infuriating. That yeah, whole right. part of the movie, where it, it, Steve it's because just, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like you're trying to tell the macro and the micro together, and it just sometimes didn't click thematically when it comes to that movie. I think the action sequences are pretty cool and fun, but if you really thought about it, like, you know, Iron Man is just Tony Stark was trying to get rid of his like guilty conscience <laughs> the whole time. So yeah. all right. It, I also agree with um Jared. It is Dark World. And I just you know, we talked about this last week about the Fast and the Furious. For some reason, the damn this damn Kevin Feige is trying to make Dark World like important. Just right. like they're trying to make fa- Tokyo Drift important in this whole damn thing. Okay, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Tokyo Drift is the best one. I will not have slander of Tokyo now, Drift me, on this podcast. Let me podcast. ask you this. If it wasn't <laughs> set in Japan and for... Listen, you're <laughs> that my heritage is playing... Yeah. <laughs> playing... No, it's the fucking best one. Han is the best. Get the fuck out of here, you guys. So, uh, as he so, cracked that movie uh, that whole awesome. scene where he's fucking teaching him how to drift and stuff that's the best montage in the whole series yeah let's 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 move on that's 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 that's, that's for another time i guess you should have been here last week eh instead of yeah. your brother's wedding yeah defending the honor of this movie oh, God, instead of oh. being at my brother's wedding <laughs> priorities you know what i'm saying uh, wow. uh so Let's lead off with number five. Jared, who do you have? Oh, what movie do you have at number five? Uh, number five is Civil War. Civil War. Civil War, Civil War, Civil War. The original Civil War comic was really great um, because it was, you know, it introduced the idea of the, you know, the Superhero Registration Act, yada, yada, written by Mark Miller. Um, but the craziest thing about it in the comics was that they fucking killed superheroes. I, you know, I understand they couldn't do that in this one. Like they couldn't absolutely murder superheroes, but like the comic had like Reed Richards, like making a clone of Thor. Uh, like it was nuts. Uh, I think if they had a lot of the Sony characters, like if they had the rights to the Sony characters, Fantastic Four and all them, I think it would have been even better. But I love the introduction uh, that this was the introduction of Spider-Man. I think it's so smart that they introduced Spider-Man like this instead of like, oh, his first movie. And then he gets called into this because it made it, you know, it made it feel way more fleshed out. We already knew him in his movie or when it got to his movie. Um, and I also just, I really like when it gets down to it. I love the idea of cap versus Tony and how a diametrically opposed they are, how different they are, but they're also the same. And that's why they don't get along. 
sometimes. It's just Civil War is what makes me appreciate Infinity War. It makes me appreciate Endgame. All of those. It, this is, Civ, Civil War is that the key, you know, at the top of the arch, the key keystone right there no, that's I, holding I the about, whole yeah. arch together. Yeah, I like that. I like that analogy. It's nice. And because if you didn't have that, the emotional payoff of Tony dying, all of that stuff wouldn't be there. It would be there, but it wouldn't be as heartfelt in my mind. Joe, who do you have at number five? Uh, before I do my list, because I have two lists, uh, are we counting Guardians as all, at all? They are not. He's not an okay, OG. So that's Avenger. fine. Um, okay. So my and we're talking specifically the movie, right? Yes. Okay, so my number five is the third Iron Man. Um, I think interesting. Uh, interesting thing about Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr. is that I think it's very cool that um, I don't know if it's because the comic books originally um, depicted uh, someone like that looks exactly like Robert Downey Jr. But like, th- there's very very few movies out there I think that have like ridiculously good casting like. We're talking like Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow is like classic. Uh, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. And I think Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man is one of those like it, it fits the glove really, really well. Um, I think that overall as a movie, uh, it served function as a sort of tying off that trilogy, even though that, you know, Iron Man's and all the other ones. Um I think the action sequence are good. I, I really like the the ending sequence where they had, you know, all those suits come up all the different variations of suits and throughout the whole trilogy. Um, the one thing that I like, and I think this may be the case for all the MCU movies with Iron Man. I just like that. They keep on upping the ante on how he suits up, which is all I thought it was really, really cool each time. Um, whereas, you know, when he first did, it, it took like, it was like a whole 10 minute sequence, him getting iron, you know, putting the suit on. But I thought that was really cool. Um, very, very visually awesome. Um, and, um, I, I very much liked it. So that's uh, my number three, Iron Man 3. At number five, I actually have the newest movie that just came out. It is Black Widow. I appreciate a good spy movie, and that's what that movie is. Um, it it kind of resets the MCU in a lot of ways, uh, but specifically the character of Natasha Romanoff. Uh, it, it basically expands uh, her story, and after watching it, and then you go rewatch Infinity War Endgame, you'll see why she made some of the decisions that she did. Uh, the family aspect itself is actually really the best parts of this movie. David Harbour is so good in this movie. But Florence Pugh, the queen of Midsommar, she is going to be featured more in the future of the MCU. And I am gladly here to have it. But I think it's a good uh, send off for Scarlett Johansson uh, for her role as Black Widow. So yeah. at five, I'll have it. That's what I'll I have at number forget, five. I forget she she died. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's like fuck. I feel so bad. So we'll get to number four here, Jared. What do you have at number four? Um, my number four is. It's the cat. It's the first Captain America movie. Like I don't listen. I am one of the. It, it's a. It's in a weird spot for me. I like it, but I also don't like parts of it. I think it kind of it drags in spots. It's whatever. But gosh, like when it's on, it's so on. The Red Skull, you know, the whole part with Tommy Lee Jones, all of that stuff is so good. Like it's one. It's like the early other than iron man it's one of the early movies that like you can see it and being like yeah this might work guys like this guy do you do y'all remember what happened what your reaction was when you heard chris evans be cast as captain america freaking um yeah johnny johnny from fantastic four (laughs) yeah that's exactly what i thought i was like what the fuck johnny storm get this guy out of here you know uh you know how there's a you know that happens a lot you know how like you have an actor that did like a weird role that you hated and then he's gonna be cast for like like was it robert patterson being batman or whatever yeah they just Um, finished filming that's what i mean like i think that a lot of the times like that where they take a role which seemingly seems like outside of 
what they are known for. Um, in my experience, like it's generally not that bad. You know, it's it's a lot more favorable than anticipated. So mm-hmm. um, when I first heard about, it, I was like, oh, cool. I think it, it might be pretty good. So that that was just my general reaction. Although Fantastic Four was fucking terrible. Holy shit, man! I I think I've learned from Heath Ledger and Dark Knight that I'm like I'm not going to question these um casting choices until I actually see the movie. Like, yeah, okay, that's that's like, true too. Even I was like Jared Leto as Joker. I guess. Okay, I yeah, but I should I should have should have judged that one. Yeah, that was not <laughs> great. You know, I think I blame that more on how it was written and how he was because t- I think Jared Leto is a good actor. I think is that there. I think I think he can do what he's told very well because I think y- that Jan Upazma. Yeah, love, so that's like they know, they say, hey, we want the Joker to be this crazy green haired dude like that, and you know they told we want X, and he probably just gave him X. That's just my opinion on it. So, anyways, so Joe, what do you have at number four? Yeah, it's the first Captain America. Um, I think um, Captain America. Uh, is a very, very uh, huge pillar of the whole series, obviously. Um, I think that uh, his origin story was very well done. Um, I do agree with pretty much every point that Jared said. I'd say that the whole situation, you know how he was a skinny dude in the army or whatever, and then he became you know super jacked and all that stuff? It was, like, I don't think the technology caught up for the time, so they have... Like his face on a skinny yeah. dude, like so he has wild. a giant ass head. So I mean, I I gotta give him credit. Like they tried their best, but that part didn't translate so well. Um, but I think the origin story was done very well. I think the casting was is, was done very very well. I, I liked it, and uh, overall, just a very very solid movie. And um, it 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 served its purpose for what it needed to do, and that's really all you can ask for. Um, and it was it was a very early Marvel movie, um, and a lot it's been progressed you know a lot since then. So that's my fourth. So my number four is actually in Captain America movies when or it's a Civil War. So I okay. just like what Jared was talking about. I I really like the different dynamic between Tony and Cap. And like I said, this is. They cheated a little bit because it probably should have been an Avengers movie, <laughs> but you know they yeah, they just totally. still it as Captain America. I just think that the Russo brothers get um, Captain America and how Steve Rogers thinks. I love the introduction of uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman as uh, T'Challa uh, with Black Panther. It was a fun fun movie to watch until you start thinking about the political stuff. Then it doesn't hold all that well but if we just stick on he's trying to protect his friend while betraying his other friend it's a fun movie to watch yeah all right totally. all right jared who you what film do you have at number three for ragnarok baby mm-hmm. um people people really either love this movie or fucking hate this movie i found um i think it is a breath of fresh air Taika Waititi's direction of this film is the best thing to happen to the Marvel universe since the Russo brothers came on full stop. The way that everybody in the film, like seemed to be like, yeah, this is working. This is what we're doing. I love that. This is, I I, I love the comedy nature of it. It, I mean, Thor is ridiculous. It's absolutely, he's absolutely crazy. And for them to put like the Jeff Goldblum aspect into it, planet Hulk stuff into it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I I mean, the introduction, introduction of Valkyrie, Mm -hmm. the, um, the mute, the use of music in it, man, it just was firing on all cylinders. Kate, hold on. Someone was fucking in Tokyo drifting outside my house. Um, Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Kate Blanchett was unreal mm-hmm. in this film. Um, in more ways than one. She absolutely brought physical presence to the to the movie and just a real menace. The one tweak I would do is I would have had Thunderstruck play instead of Immigrant Song, but it's fine. You know, it's I bet you it's because they wouldn't let them like 
is like no, nah, yeah. you know, or something, or some, there's a money issue. There's a lot of things where like, oh, this be great, like no, we can't, uh, we can't give yeah. it to you. So Immigrant, sure. it's always a safe choice, but an overused uh, safe choice. But this <laughs> movie, this movie got me laughing more than any other MCU movie, probably outside of Spider Man. I mean, I watch these movies to have fun and laugh and like be giddy. I have the stupidest giddy laughter when I watch stuff like this and The Mandalorian. And just, it's like, oh, fuck. This is like, I turn into like an eight year old. Like, and I had so much fun with this movie. Nah, that great, great choice. Joe, who do you got? What film do you have at number three? Oh, God. I hope I didn't, like, I didn't go out. Spider Man is part of it, right? Because I have no. Spider Man Homecoming as my third. That man is not an original. Okay, well, Avenger. fuck it. Spider Man Homecoming is my third. <laughs> yeah, I'm buddy. just going to pick yeah. it anyways. Do it. Uh, Do it Because you know what it was? I had two lists, and for whatever reason, uh, and I was like, Guardians can't be part of it. And I wasn't thinking. Anyway, I apologize. And I, it's probably it's going to be none of your lists. It's fine. Um, I just, I liked it. You know, the fun thing about Spider Man, I'm going to go off soft standard here, is I find it funny that they get younger every time. And then Aunt May also gets younger every time. So I I absolutely love the decision for a young Aunt May. It never mm-hmm. fucking made sense to me that Aunt May was an old woman. Why the fuck is that a thing? Well, is the whole idea is that if the uncle dies, actually he gets he gets he gets, like, he gets shot or something, something weird. Um, I thought the whole idea is that he went to live with aunt, aunt and uncle, but they're like sort of his grandparents sort of deal. But no, it, no, but 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 that's what I don't understand. Why are they so fucking old? Maybe they're sticking to the what was it like that in the comics though? I think yeah. it was. No, that's yeah. what. It, yeah, but like that's I'm I'm saying the concept of Aunt May and and yeah Aunt May being Uncle Ben yeah. and Uncle Ben being super old people never made sense even with Peter in college. It didn't make sense to me. That's the thing though. Now now Peter's not in college. Is he still in college in the latest one? Because I remember he no, was he's in a school, school bus. He's still he's in high school. school. Right, so I don't know if they're dialing back time again. Marissa Tomei is a is an absolute dime. Uh, so I'm so I'm saying is if if they in the future where they inevitably will, if you make another Spider Man, like how is 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 this as young as you go? You no, know? they keep they they Tom Holland says he wants to be Spider Man until he can't do it anymore. Yeah, so pretty much he now we get to college years, and then we can see adult adult Peter Parker. That's what I mean. Like, did 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 the other Spider Mans decide not like they're like I'm done after three? Like, how'd that work out? Like, I yeah, really I think know why. it was like rights issues, and then like, yeah, yeah I, I think they just wanted to stop. To- Toby Maguire didn't want to do it anymore. Okay. Andrew Pretty- Garfield was willing to do it, but it, the movie product wasn't there, so that so God, to- get also there. Toby Maguire fucked his back up playing mm-hmm. Spider Man. That's unfortunate, but anyways, uh, just for the sake of um, of of being honest with the original, if I were to have another three, it'd be some sort of Thor movie. I don't know if the fourth Thor is coming out. That being said, sort of a, so another side tangent. I was I forgot to mention this at the beginning. I was watching Star Wars, not Star Wars, Star Trek, mm-hmm. and I f- totally forgot Chris Hemsworth is in that movie. Movie's great. I watched and it I, too recently, and I thought I initially I thought oh he's like some sort of small character at the very beginning. No, he you know he played dad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What?" And so I don't know how I told, but I guess this is back in 2009. So I guess he wasn't like the biggest star yet. He was. He wasn't Thor yet, right? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was. And Thor was his, uh, his big, huge break. Is that what it is? I thought he had a couple things beforehand because you know he's a tall, handsome dude that you know he could play pretty much anything. I'd yeah, say. Like, but like um, Thor. I'm, I'm also curious to know how the fourth movie is going to be like. Love and Thunder. Um, I like that the whole concept of the like they're going very like like retro y, I guess, with how it's being presented. Um and um anyways, I I I I just you know, I think the whole Thor series is very fun. I I th- I like that Thor is um sort of not super serious all the time, played by Chris Hemsworth. I also like that uh, was it Matt Damon is one of in one of them, just out of like just like, hey, you want to come and do this fake scene? I thought that was funny. Uh, but yeah, if if I had to pick one, it, Thor, one of the Thor movies, I'd say uh, it would be in, in in number three. So sorry about that, guys. What I have at number three is the original Iron Man, the one that kind of kicked Ooh. it off, started it all. Oh, I, you know what? I completely forgot a movie. I'm changing this because I had what? it mixed up. Yeah, 
it's not Iron Man at number three. It's Iron Man three. Hey, I absolutely love Iron Man three. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> I, you know, the only complaint I have about Iron Man three is that Rebecca Hall was the bad guy, and they didn't fully commit to it. They should have, right? I love the swerve of Ben Kingsley. Get the fuck the out of here. I, I absolutely I take, loved it. <laughs> listen, I take two fucking weeks off this podcast and you guys <laughs> fucking go crazy. Who are uh, you? That's, that's what happens, man. I, it was a Shane Black <laughs> movie that just happened to have Tony Stark in it. Oh my. I completely goodness. enjoyed it. I, I just have it know. at five. I don't have it at three. <laughs> like, five is just like the fringe, you know, I was like, oh, it's very good. Oh no, man. It barely I think made it. That's, I appreciate the history of Iron Man and what it kicked off and started. Again, I recognize that. I like it on a very superficial level. I thought it was cool. Like, but I'm like I, a five-year-old. I'm like, oh, that's cool this and cool that. But man, I, 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 I absolutely figurines. enjoyed Iron Man 3. My wife enjoys Iron Man 2 more, and I'm like, you're nuts. Also, <laughs> I mean, oh God, Iron Man 2 had such potential. I really love Sam Rockwell in that movie. Yeah. They did not do Sam Rockwell justice. He should have been just I feel like, way more. I feel like in a this. lot of trilogies, like the middle movie tends to not be well, as good. You know, the problem with Iron Man two is that it was a bridge to set everything up, and that's why I hated that movie a lot because it was trying to tell a story for twenty percent of it, and the other eighty percent is oh, I got to set this up, I got to set this up, I got to set yeah. this up. And I, I mean, they they knew that they were doing a trilogy right at that point. I don't. And so I don't know if they knew they were doing a trilogy. I think they made the third Iron Man because they're like, I don't know if we can trust these new characters just yet. They want to just kind of get through it. But yes, I have Iron Man three at number three. I completely so missed it. So where the Mandarin is the worst thing that <laughs> the DC universe or the not DC universe the fucking. I, the the Marvel Cinematic Universe is done. I can't wait for Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, though. I oh, yeah. I hope that sight on that. I hope that it's very very good. The fact that you got Tony Leung in that movie like makes me so happy. Like I am, I am a big fan of his. If you guys know who he is, he's like, uh, if you ever watch Inferno Affairs, he's the original. Uh, no, I uh, I like the there. actor very yeah. much. So, I just. There's a there's a growing consensus amongst Asian actors saying that Asian men particularly are really pigeonholed to one of two things. You're either a kung fu master or a goofy sack of shit. Okay. Okay. As soon as uh, hang with me here. When you said Asian in multiple yeah. times in a row, do you guys ever seen the cable guy? Yes. Do you remember Ben Stiller being like the Menendez brother (laughs) kind of like joke in there in the courtroom and he played the he played the joke uh, like of a fake call to the police after he murdered his parents he goes I "I I think they were Asian they look (laughs) Asian to me I will never not fucking laugh at that part my brother and I quote quote it to each other all the time Cable Guy came out in the wrong era. So that, that movie, good. That Cable Guy is not as is appreciated. Cable Guy seems to have a, like a cult following more than anything else. Deservedly Love so. Love that movie. All right, Jared. Who do you have at two? What film do you have at number two? Winter Soldier. Uh, Winter Soldier is the best Iron Man movie. Um, <laughs> hands down. Not, uh, fuck. Iron Man, Captain America movie. Um, Robert Redford was so <laughs> good in that film i it was the first time when you anyone watched one of these movies and was like oh oh yeah no this is this is what they all can be like they all can strive to be this grandiose this good this like mature have these themes to it i absolutely love this movie i like it's been a while since i've watched it and i really need to revisit it but you know what i mean like the whole mm-hmm. like Robert River was the perfect person for that role. Yeah, he was. Um, that's a great pick. Winter Soldier is excellent. 
absolutely like and it, and you sh- and it like the Russo brothers absolutely came on and stole the show and it was like yeah get the, these are the guys mm-hmm. these are the guys like John Favreau and the and them are are the guys yeah um Joe who do you have at number two I'm a little worried I fucked this whole thing up <laughs> here's a question because I have Avengers Endgame. <laughs> Fuck it. It's going to be Avengers. <laughs> God damn it, Joe. I misunderstood the assignment. You get a lot of that as a teacher, Jared. Um, I get that. <laughs> what, what, I get what, that. Are you grade, what are you grading Joe right now? On the it's assignment? credit, no credit, and you're tutoring to no credit. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to pass, no pass, please. <laughs> hey, man, I, just, I understood it as just MCU movies. I fucked it up, but it's okay. Uh, that, that's what I'm going with, and I have I I, I pick a wait. Why can't I pick Avengers in game? <laughs> is it because solo movies is what we're picking? <laughs> yes, clearly in the messages I wrote solo. Oh, I I, I, I wrote solo and OG at the same time. <laughs> oh, OG's on me. That that's that's one hundred percent on me. Uh, fuck 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 solo movies. I'll take Endgame. Uh, <laughs> Hey man, it's it's a look. First of all, if I were to take all MC movies, I I think Endgame's up there anyways. Um, I don't have anything for the first top two then, but I'm just gonna say what I have for the top two. Um, well, I'm saying that it's gonna be I, I, the first one's different. I don't know if that, if that helps, but uh, I have, I have <laughs> Endgame is for I just it's just because it's a, I, I, and I'm sure that it it doesn't really apply here, but it's just a great finale to a saga is is, is what I have. But um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's more to it, Joe. I Joe, feel terrible now. What's up? So yeah, I just want people to know that in yeah, the group yeah. chat, it yeah. was solo original Avenger <laughs> movies, and you picked Endgame, <laughs> and your reasoning was it was a great end. No, so here's the thing: it's and a great clearly- ensemble. I clearly uh, didn't read the 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 te- the, the, the yeah, rest no of it. Sh- no obviously, shit. fucking no obviously. Shit. But yeah, for people that, listening, that, that, for people listening to the podcast, uh, just imagine Jared in his classroom and hearing a student speak on a topic that was assigned, and he clearly misread it. Dude, that if, that, if, that if, if, if Jared if Jared had more hair, it would be all gone by now. He didn't need to go get a haircut. Of hair, guys. He, don't he, uh, you know? He, he didn't need to go get a haircut for his yeah. uh, brother's wedding. His, this, yeah. this, he should have waited this week when we were talking about <laughs> Simon. You know, uh, I always thought that. Now that's again super off tangent. Off. I always thought that to be the most hilarious thing because actually, uh, I've been in classes where that happens to other people, where they completely for- fucked up the assignment in the f- most hilarious way. <laughs> And like the light in the teacher's eyes, uh, just, fade. Just, yeah. just just dies. But it's also like it, it's a flash of rage, white <laughs> hot fire. It's just <laughs> I guess you know I would have to say that it's just because it depends on how long you've been teaching for. I'd say in my opinion, like you start like getting glazed over like this mother. No, so here's the thing. It's like if you really legitimately have a question about the assignment, I'm fine with answering it. It's <laughs> yeah. It's, it's when I have to fucking repeat myself over <laughs> and over and over and over again that I fucking start to lose my shit. I legitimately I I I I walked out one day. I was like, "All right, you guys you, you guys just hang out. I need five minutes. And I walked outside and I was like, <laughs> you know, uh, this is why teachers drink. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's the, as a student uh, in that scenario. I, I not the one that fucked up, but I thought that to be hilarious. I mean, because the fallout's not on me. It's on the teacher. And I just sit there laughing in the back. So, oh, God. Yeah, the file is for the audience listening to this being like, uh, anyways, I apologize. But I do I do have a legitimate movie for one. Good. I just Okay. Great. I Can't just, wait to hear it. Ah, fantastic. All right, go ahead. All right. So my number two is Thor Ragnarok. A lot of the reasons why Jared said it, Taika Waititi just elevated what, you know, 
I, I appreciate what Kenneth Branagh was trying to do with Thor in the first movie, <laughs> to making God. it to to making it a little bit more Shakespeare. But the best parts of the first Thor movie is the fish out of water, right? That stuff was hilarious, and there was kind of this untapped potential comedy that could be there. It was extinguished in Thor: The Dark World. You don't see any of that there, and Taika Waititi just decided let's embrace this shit um, because he is out of thunder. I mean. It's very ridiculous, and the comedic beats hit so well that when the dramatic parts happen, it works to another level, and that's a testament to not only the writing, but to Chris Hemsworth. Um, Kate Blanchett, like I said, is one of the top three Marvel villains sans Thanos, right? Like, yeah, she is that absolutely. good. Uh, Loki, played by Tom Hiddleston, excellent as well always, and it was a breath of fresh air to have Tessa Thompson in there as Valkyrie. So I'm excited. Like Joe was talking about what, uh, love and thunder, right? The new, yeah, movie that's yeah, come out. That's the new one. Yeah. So, and I'm excited to see where the direction it takes it, but Thor Ragnarok number two on my list, you know, uh, on that topic, I think a lot of people, when Tom Hiddleston was cast as Loki, were like, like, this is not going to be that great. Cause I think his, I don't know what he did before Loki. But it was definitely nothing like an action comic superhero thing. I think he, you know, sort of did, you know, maybe low key stuff. But it was again, it's, it goes back to one of those things where you know you cast a dude that didn't necessarily is known for that topic or that genre, and they do surprisingly well. And I think you know that that's the case for a lot of a t- lot of things, right? So yeah, just I thought that was very interesting. I, I'm very glad that Tom Hiddleston did a good job. All right, Galaxy Brains. We somehow got to number one. Some <laughs> I mean, so Jerry, we, I guess two thirds of the podcast. Did. <laughs> it's a passing grade in my book. So, Fuck Jared, yeah. what do you have at number one as the best solo OG Avenger movie? Uh, we call a this type of two thirds passing a complimentary D and push you on your way in the biz. Hey, um, man, D is good a, enough. D's will get you a high school degree, kind of. Um, I know C's num- get degrees. <laughs> number one, number one is Iron Man. That's, I mean, it still holds up today. It's absolutely incredible. The scene, like, I love the montage when they're in the cave. I love uh, Robert Downey Jr. absolutely just buying in to this movie. Like, he could have phoned it in. It would have been fine. But he bought in. He was Tony Stark. I remember watching for the first time with my friend Alex, and we're just like, like it, it, it wide eyed, just going, "Oh my god!" Like they're doing it. They're doing it. And yeah, you could say stuff about Obadiah Stane about how, you know, okay, yeah, he's kind of a whatever villain, but like, man, it worked. The way they introduced Shield, the way they had these little Easter eggs, I think it worked and it is the best it is the original it is the best I, like i don't think many other i don't think any other ones top it to be honest because it moves at such a nice pace we're not left you know with a lull we're not it's not too long it doesn't overstay its welcome john favreau it absolutely kills it with everything else in that movie and it is the reason why we are speaking about these movies today great great pick joe yeah, it's uh, not really much to say here because I picked the same movie. Um, and as I think it's not on top of what he said is it's more the fact that, uh, again, like I said before, casting was just worked out great. And I, I think that uh, um, financially, Robert Downey uh, probably made all of his money from these series, right? Like, I don't think he made a lot from like all the other stuff necessarily, but... Um, I like that uh, this is really the the Kickstarter of the whole thing, like you said before. Um, I guess you can, yeah. I mean, it is it's it is what it is. And this guy, and you can say a lot of things about Captain America being sort of like the 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 stone that keeps the, the bridge up. Um, but I think, I you know, I have a hard time considering Captain America, you know, from overall story standpoint to be more important than iron man and uh 
that's why I don't know. I, I'm just a big Iron Man fan in general. And just the first one, just because of how well Robert Downey did did in that movie. Again, I I, I, didn't, I didn't I wasn't the biggest fan of of the the bad guy there. Um, but they had to set something up, and I think overall they did a good job of setting up the story to be opened up to a whole u- new universe. And I'm <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure if uh, they knew that this is what the plan was when they were making the first Iron Man in terms of this is going to be a trilogy. Then they're going to make, you know, fucking 30 more movies or whatever. Um, but I'm glad they did. Um, that being said, the only and this isn't really a knock on Iron Man per se, but this is more of a knock on the MCU universe. And, and it's more of a personal thing more than anything else is I've been just sort of as of late, um, just sort of uh, been uh superheroed tired out i think and it's 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 been going on for about a year now because i think i've seen almost every single marvel movie in theaters and the, while they were all good um i've you know i don't know it, i don't know if it's because they come out with two three movies every if not more every year and just getting kind of i don't know if that's is that just me being old you know sort of thing um but uh I don't know. Like I, I don't know how to really feel about. Uh, they're coming. I don't know the what ifs coming out from from Marvel, and I think that's gonna be really cool. Um, but I don't know. I just uh, I hope that they put a a nice new fresh take, which is what WandaVision and and Loki apparently do, which is why I I like them, even though I was I, I was a little bit tired of all the other ones. Um, because I I I I think the movies that are core of MCU started to get a little bit more formulaic and that's kind of i got a little bit bored on that but if they can do a, like a new take on it um a new angle at it uh with the upcoming movies i think um i can i can you know jump right back on the horse but iron man the first one a classic and it holds up very well my number one is not iron man it's actually captain america winter soldier yeah buddy. i'm a big i'm a big spy genre guy like Jared was talking earlier, Robert Redford being in there is reminding of like the Cold War stuff is actually really cool to see. But as you guys were talking about Iron Man being kind of like the laying foundation, I did not care so much for the first Captain America movie. I felt like it was just a bridge to get me to Avengers. Yeah, Um, it didn't establish kind of like I know it was trying to tell me how earnest Steve Rogers is, but I didn't really feel it. Um, I kind of felt a little bit in the first Avengers movie, but this movie kind of set me where I'm like, okay, because even though we all know Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark is the main guy in this first four phases, he needed someone to be opposite of him and it had to be believable. And the fact that this movie established that in spades made it work for me. Introducing uh, Anthony Mackie, uh, as Sam in this movie was really good. It still has some of the best hand-to-hand action sequences out there. The elevator scene is still something that people will remember of. Um, you know, I get it. If you didn't realize that Bucky Barnes was the Winter Soldier, where were you this whole time? But um, watching it in the moment is a really good review. And And when we talk about stuff that happens organically, in changing how we view the MCU. The fact that we learned that Hydra was not completely squashed and it was infiltrated was actually a really big turning point up until that moment in the MCU that changed a lot of things. I have nothing but praise for this movie. When we talk about uh, the MCU embracing the genres that their characters take, you know, this to me was the first time that they tried a different formula when telling their story, which is, like I said, the spy genre. You have, you know, Doctor Strange now with kind of embracing the horror aspect of it. Guardian Galaxy is more of a uh, buddy comedy, right? Thor is a flat-out comedy now uh, with action stuff like that. So this movie was kind of the first of a lot of things. So yes, my list ends with Captain America Winter Soldier at number one. Yeah, absolutely great pick. So, ran a little long. I mean, but it is the MCU. And this is the, I'm pretty sure it's not the last time we're going to talk about this. Um, Joe, where can they find us? 
Um, at some point, I think I should make a like a Instagram and all that stuff. They can like you guys, but uh, <clears throat> you can follow us at Film Lovers GTTG Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can yell at me how much I fucked up. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Um, please send us what you thought of the Marvel. And I, I, you know, I, I'm sure that a lot of people out there are going to have a little bit of differing opinions and, and I'm, there's going to be a sect of people who also probably didn't like Marvel or hated Marvel. That's okay. We'd love to hear from you. Please uh, send us your questions, your comments, your criticism, your concerns. We'd love to hear it. And you can also email us at filmloverspod at gmail.com. Um, and uh, if, if you don't want to uh, email us via social media, that is okay. So, film love at film numbers GTTG. Love to hear from you. Jared, where can they find you? You can find me at J L U T H Y, J Luthy on Twitter. Um, same on Instagram. Don't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> I, I post pictures of my dog, uh, sometimes my mom's cat when I house sit. That's about it. Um, as well, uh, I might be going private soon on Instagram and Twitter because I'm trying to get a job in public education. Oh, that, they look at, smart move. And if they look at my shit, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't put, I don't post inflammatory stuff on there. It's just I don't need them going back in the archives when I was like 21 and having a Twitter. Yeah, I just it's stupid that they do that. And you know. Always put your shit on private. Your your, pro- per, your private life should be separated from your. I job mean, they're just gonna come at me and be like, "Man, you really like pro wrestling," and I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, I do." But uh, um, yeah. So uh, hope uh, you guys have a nice week. It's nice to be back chatting with the homies again. You guys can find me at Jno11 on Twitter, Instagram. If you guys want to catch us on Twitch, it's twitch.tv forward slash jno11. We'll be on Thursdays roughly at 8. Just depends on tech. But next week, uh, hope we get to see you guys. Um, We're going to talk about live action and CGI because we want to slam. It's Space Jam coming out next week. So let's go. The reviews of that movie are wild. All right, Galaxy Brains. Have a good night. 